today we're starting a brand new series. It's going to be a refresher series, if you like. Um, and we're going to be focused on faith, the subject of faith, praise God. When we talk about the fourth dimension, I say the fourth dimension is the dimension of faith. It is the eternal dimension and the currency, the currency that those who operate from the fourth dimension and in the fourth dimension use is faith, praise God. So that as a believer, no matter how, you know, how grown you are as a believer and how old you have been, uh, you know, how many years you have been a believer, you must constantly and consistently renew your knowledge of that subject, praise God. Because you can forget. Bible says that lest we forget, because it is possible, praise God. And that is why we're going to be doing this. So starting today, we're going to be talking on the subject of faith. And today we are starting with no other than the faith of Abraham. That's the topic of today's message, the faith of Abraham. What made Abraham successful? What made him the father of faith? That is what we're going to be looking at this morning. And with the help of God, I believe that what we will get from today will help us to go ahead and make the difference, especially in this day and age that we live in. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity once again to look in your word. Father, we are asking not just for sounds. We are not just asking for, for, for the verbalization of words. We want to receive your spirit. We want to receive your power. We want to receive, mighty Father God, that faith that changes things, that turns things around, that faith that acquires the world as you promised us, that we receive it from this word this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Grant me to speak this word with simplicity, with clarity, and with accuracy that ultimately our will the understanding and power unto every single person in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Spirit of God, we just hand over to you this morning. We say have your way in our midst. Move in this place like you want. Yes, that ultimately you will take all the glory and the blessings will be ours in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise God. All right then, so let's go straight into the word this morning. We're going to be starting from Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. We're going to read from that place so, um, so that we just familiarize ourselves with uh, the promise God made to Abraham that started, as it were, his journey towards becoming the father of faith and the father of us all, if you like. Praise God. Let's look in Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to read from verse 1. This morning, I want you to, um, how would I put this? I want you to listen like one that is learning a trade, like one that is learning a skill. Praise God. You know, when you go to technical school and they are teaching you how to, how to fix, um, in the old days, how to fix a carburetor of a car or how to fix, you know, the, the, the battery the, or the battery system, the, the, what they call the alternator of the car, you know, I want you to listen like that this morning because what you will learn is applicable. It can be used by anybody if only you would listen and learn how to use it. Praise God. So in this place in Genesis chapter 12, we are told from verse 1, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee, verse 2, a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. So Abraham departed 
as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Abraham, from Aaron, sorry. And Abraham took his took Sarai, his wife, and Lord, his brother's son, and all their substance they had gathered, and the souls that, were, that they had gotten in Aaron, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. Praise God. I wanted to, I wanted us to start from here, because Abraham, like I said, is the father of faith. That's the title God gave him. I didn't give him that title. God gave him that title. Okay, before we talk about this, let's go quickly to Romans chapter 4. I was going to read that later on, but let's just read it together before we start um, our discussion this morning. Romans chapter 4. Let's go there. Mm. Father, we thank you. Verse 1. It says, what shall we say? Are you all there? Romans chapter 4 verse 1. He says, what shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, had found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had wear off to glory. He says, but not before God. For what saith the scriptures? Abraham believed God, and he was counted unto him for righteousness. Now unto him that walketh. Is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt? Says, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, says his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man. The blessedness of the man whom God imputed righteousness without work, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Praise God. Said, commit, verse 9 says, commit this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. Says, for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Verse 10, how was it reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. He says, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised. And he said that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Verse 12 says, And the father of circumcision to them, it says, well, I wanted us to see that word where God called him the father. Scriptures called him the father. Verse, that, verse 11, I read verse 11 again. It says, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of faith, which he had been, yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Is the father of faith, the father of all that come to God through faith. He says, though they be not circumcised, whether they have walked or not walked, whether they have the pre-qualification or not, whether they have the preconditions or not, he says, as long as they have faith, Bible says, Abraham became the father of them all. He says in verse 12, he says, and also the father of circumcision to them who who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham. Praise God. So that what makes you a descendant of Abraham? If you walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. That is why we study the faith of Abraham. So that we can be able to walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. Praise God. Verse 13 says, he says, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, 
but through the righteousness of faith. That is why we can appropriate that promise for ourselves. God promised Abraham that he will be the owner, the heir. The word is the word is kleronomos and of the world that word is cosmos the word kleronomos means owner or possessor the inheritor of the material universe not of the spirit not of things that are not seen but of material things praise god and he says he will be the heir, not through the law, not by obeying conditions, not by having the preconditions or being qualified, but through the righteousness that faith bestows. Praise God. And that is why it's important that we understand. When we talk about the fourth dimension being superior and being the creator of every element in the three dimensions that humans live in naturally, praise God, it is with this mind or this mindset that faith is what operates in that fourth dimension because it completely gives you material things without any regard to your physical or three-dimensional qualifications, praise God. So it says he is the owner of this material universe through the righteousness of faith. Verse 14 says, For if they which of the law be heirs, then faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect, praise God. We're still going to take a lot more from that place, but I want us to now flip back to Genesis chapter 12, because this is the place where we see the faith that made Abraham the father of all nations, that made Abraham the prototype, that made Abraham the father of faith. This is where we see this thing in action, praise God. What did Abraham do? that made God call him righteous. That's what we want to see here. If you read the verse chapter 11, you see that Abraham was from a nation of idol worshippers. His father, his grandfather, they were idol worshippers. Abraham came from that nation where there was no Bible. He lived in an era where there was a lot of people didn't even know there was a God. They worshipped stones. They did all kinds of things. There was evil on the earth. Angels, fallen angels walked around as it were. Fallen angels were getting married to normal human beings. A lot of atrocities were going on in this era. It was in this time that Abraham met with God or God met with Abraham, praise God. So that Having faith at a time like this wasn't something you could take for granted. God himself had to, you know, call this man his own friend. Praise God. Because in that era where everybody, well, if you like, I would say that the era we live in too at this time is, is looking similar. Praise God. Where all kinds of evil are now being no, becoming normal. And if you want to try to do things that are, you know, that, that, that are of God, you are the one that, you know, they, they begin to make you appear abnormal. Praise God. And that is how you, you, the only way you can understand and what it was like for Abraham to actually trust God. So Abraham was living at a time like this. All kinds of things happened. Then in verse 12, chapter 12, verse 1, God now came to this man and God told him certain things. Number one, God said, do this, depart from your father's house unto a land I will show thee. Number one, faith always has an action. Remember what we said the other day when we we're talking about um, uh, I think the topic of that message was spirit over time um, space and matter, praise God. And I was telling you all that you, was, you must look for that instruction that that is what gives you the power to operate in the fourth dimension and to completely achieve results irrespective of your three dimensional qualifications there must be an instruction from God. That is what you are looking for. We referenced Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1, uh, uh, verse 2, sorry. He said there, he said, I will stand me upon my watch to see what he will say to me so that I might know what to say when I am questioned, to know the answer to give when they come there to question me. So that it is important that you understand. Peter said to Jesus, said, if it is you, Give me an instruction. Command me to come to you. Tell me to what to do. If it is you, 
the mother of Jesus in John chapter 2, he said, whatsoever is said to you, so that it is that instruction that is super critical when it comes to the manifestation or the efficacy of faith, if you like. Whatever faith you are walking in that is not based on an instruction from God is just you taking a stroll, praise God. God said to Abraham, go, depart, get out. Just like Jesus said to them, feed the people. You feed the people. Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. It is I, come to me. Jesus said, and every time God wants to activate or bring faith to work, God will give you a proceeding word. Jesus referenced that place in Deuteronomy. He said, man shall not live by bread alone. He said, you will not stay alive by eating bread alone. He says, but by the steady flow of words. That comes from God. Message translation of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. He says, by the steady flow of words. So that that instruction is the most critical thing here. Remember, we are learning to walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. And the number one thing was what God gave to him. The word God gave to him. We want to dissect what God said to him. That made Abraham the father of faith. Number one, Bible says God came to him and God said to him, Depart, leave, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. I dare say, maybe Abraham did not completely obey God. But well, maybe it wasn't his fault as well. Because Bible tells us, what, what am I referring to? The fact that Abraham took Lot. Because Lot was also his kindred, no? So God said to him, depart from thy kindred. And he said, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. But Lot was his kindred. He was his brother's son. And he took Lot along. So he said, maybe, well, maybe Abraham's journey could have been maybe easier, better, you know, maybe things could have even been much more than they, out, you know, they, they turned out eventually. But we see here that God specified the details of the action Abraham needed to take. The action is get out of your country, number one. Number two, depart from your kindred. We'll now define that word kindred. Who are his kindred? Praise God. He has to get that definition straight. He says, and from your father's house. Praise God. So we could define that physically, a physical location where his father lived. And we could also define his father's house as the the the. the is the, the side of his family that was from his father's house, praise God. Maybe there might be his mother's house as well. But he said, depart from your father's house. And then he said, depart unto a land that I will show you, praise God. So that that is the instruction. Every faith walk must have this element of God's instruction. You know, the other day I was, I was praying about certain things. And as I prayed, God gave me a scripture. And I read all through that scripture. And that scripture was basically a book of both prophecies and affirmation. And when I read all of it, I was, my soul was lifted. I was encouraged because, I mean, it, 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 was, it was in a vision. I just heard that word. He said, Isaiah, and he told me the chapter. Of I, and I went there. And when I got there, it was like a, 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 a full chapter detailing the things I had gone through, the things I'm going through, and what would happen eventually. And it was so encouraging and so soothing, praise God. But you see, in all of that, when I was done, I said, Holy Spirit, but I don't see any instruction here. Praise God. You see, in time past, when that kind of word comes, and it's so, as in, it, it, the witness in my spirit was that this is God speaking to me. Most times, I would want to say there must be something I should do from this. And I would use my head to try to look for a step to take. Praise God. But now I know. Don't create a step yourself. Wait still, praise God. The same God that gave you that word to encourage you, gave you that word to strengthen you, peradventure gave you that word to lift your spirit, 
would also give you another word or an additional word that will instruct you as to what to do because of the things he said earlier. Until that one comes, wait, praise God. Wait, don't be in a hurry. Wait for the instruction, praise God. Wait for the instruction. Jesus' mother said, whatever he tells you to do, wait for the instruction. See, in, when we get to verse 2, it says, and I will make your name great. If you do what I say do. You see, it could have come where God will promise him. The same way I said God gave me that word. This is similar to what God gave me. And he said, or God could have told him, um, you know, Abraham, I have in mind to bless you. I will make your name great. I will make you a blessing. It says, I will, let, let me just read verse 2. It says, and I will make your name, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will become a blessing. It says, and I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Praise God. And God stops it there. Abraham will be deeply encouraged by this prophecy, praise God. He will be deeply encouraged by this word of knowledge because that's what this is. But you see, word of knowledge without word of wisdom will not produce the material results. Word of knowledge without word of wisdom will not produce the material results. Word of knowledge will tell you the facts about your situation. Present, past, future. But word of wisdom will tell you what to do. It will give you the instruction. Because if there is no what to do, that faith is handicapped. This was the way James put it. He said, faith without action. You know, I, I, when they say without works, it confuses people. Because people now think, um, you know, he that does not walk will not eat. And they preach all kinds of wrong messages. That's the way I can put it from there. But it is faith that doesn't have what to do. Faith that, that does not, you know, a faith word that doesn't come with that part that shows you the steps to take, what to do from here. It's not always logical. In fact, most times it is not logical. How is it logical to tell someone to go to the land I will show you? How do you go to the plane? You know, you go to a website that sells airline tickets. And they say, where are you going? You say, I'm, I want to go to the place God will show me. So where is the ticket? Or you go to the bus terminal or you go to the train station and you say, I want to go to the place that God will show me. Who does that? Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Praise God. But that was exactly what God told this man. So what we saw was a case of get out, pack all your things, and then go to the train station. When you get to the train station, I will update you. When you get there, we'll say, now buy a ticket going to Penn Station. And when you get to Penn Station, he will tell you now buy a ticket going to Pennsylvania, maybe Philadelphia. And when you get to Philadelphia, I will tell because that was the progressive journey that Abraham took eventually. And that's, it takes a lot of faith to do that. He wasn't just uprooting himself. He wasn't just a traveling minister. He uprooted his entire family and all that he had gathered while he was in Iran. I mean, a lifelong. This was a 75-year-old man. All the properties and everything he owned for his entire life on earth. Packed everything and started traveling like that. In piecemeal journey, praise God. It's one thing for God to tell you, I want you to go to China. And then you pack all your things, you buy the plane ticket and you leave. But then he tells you, I will, to the land I will show you. Praise God. Yeah. And that is difficult. But that was what made Abraham the father of faith. The fact that Abraham believed God and departed. When we get to verse 5, the Bible says, and Abraham, verse 4, it says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Praise God. See, Abraham, when, when we, the place we read earlier in Romans chapter 4, it says, when was Abraham called the father of faith? When was righteousness attributed or imputed unto him? Was it when he had done some special work, circumcised himself, did some things to meet up with the law? He said, no, but before. So that at this time, Abraham was a pure idol. He was, in today's parlance, Abraham was not a Christian. 
he wasn't a church going Christian. He was peradventure an atheist or maybe someone of another religion altogether. But then he received God's word. And then without accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, without doing any of those, you know, the, the rites, R-I-T-E-S, without, you know, performing or, 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 or meeting the standards set by any church for membership, Abraham just heard God's word and he obeyed it. He, he took the instruction and he ran with it. And based on that, God called him. The church said, you are not qualified, but God called him the righteousness of God. Oh, Lord have mercy. The church said, you are not a Christian, but God said, you are the righteousness of God. How? Because Abraham had the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, and he obeyed. Praise God. Faith is only faith when you have received both parts and then you obey the instructional part of it. You walk in that instruction. Praise God. So people will say things like, well, God said this to me. What should I do? If you don't know what to do, then listen some more. Am I saying, if you do not know what to do about the instruction you received, then you have not heard everything just yet. Wait some more. Wait until you hear the, 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 the action part of the word you received. God said, oh, through you, I'm going to change the entire world. And all that. I said, what do I do with that word? You know, in the past, without knowledge and some people mixing up the fourth dimension with the three-dimensional knowledge, they will say, well, just start doing something. That's a dangerous place to be. Don't start doing something. Wait and listen. Praise God. Oh, Lord have mercy. Wait. Keep doing what you were doing before the word came. And wait for to hear the whole thing. You know, there's a story told us in First Samuel. It's a story about a man that ran when, 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 um, um, what's his name now? The son of, of um, Saul, was it? No, the son of David. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I've not <laughs> looked at that in a long time. The son of either Saul or Saul, I, re I believe, when he was killed, and no, it was when Saul was killed. Sorry. Yeah, when Saul was killed. And this runner, without receiving the whole word, knowing that there was some bad blood between Saul and David, just started running and ran and ran and ran to go tell David that come. They've killed this person. He's dead. He's dead. And they took his head off. Praise God. He didn't wait for the entire message. He didn't wait to know the mood. To know that come, even though they were enemies, David revered Saul as his master, as his lord. That was all he called him all his life. So you're going to tell him that they, they've killed your enemy. It's not going to get you any promotion. It's not going to get you any award. Wait for the entire message. Wait for the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom so that you can act accordingly. See, God gives grace to those who honor the instruction. It says he gives grace to the humble. I've told you here, what is humility? Is you up, up as it were, uplifting and giving the word of God the highest place in your life. God himself said, I honor my word above my name. So you are waiting for that instruction part. You are saying, Father God, I thank you for the projection of what is going to happen. I will be the father of many nations. I will be the blessing to the whole earth. Those who bless me, you will bless them. Those who curse me, you will curse them. You will, through the, my family, all the, my, uh, my, my descendants, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I hear you, Lord. But what do you want me to do? <laughs> what must I do? I have not heard that part. What must I do? There would even be time where, where God himself would tell you. He says, the, what you will do, I will tell you with time. But for now, keep praising me. And then just keep praising him. If he has not added that yet. 
But for you to say, I, he didn't tell me anything to do. I just figured that part out. That's a dangerous place to be. Because he said, he that adds to this word, says, I will add, <laughs> I won't mention that, to their lives. And he that subtracts from it, I will subtract this so and so from their lives, praise God. In other words, God does not need your help. Praise God. Wait for the instruction. Says those that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. Praise God. So that it is important that we understand that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'm quoting Hebrews now. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of of things not seen. Praise God. Listen, the things you are hoping for, they are already ex in existence in the spirit realm, in the fourth dimensional realm, in eternity, in the realm outside of time, outside of space, and outside of matter. That thing you are hoping for is already there. Faith which is your action of obeying the instruction is the evidence that that thing is going to be manifest here on earth in the material universe, praise God. See, I've used the analogy several times. You have a piece of property in London, United Kingdom, but now you are in New York, and you are trying to do some transactions, praise God. You want to do business with a bank in America. And they say, have you got collateral? You say, yes, I've got collateral. I have a piece of landed property and um, some building on it that is worth $2 million. They say, good. So how much do you need? You say, I need a $1 million. 50% or 50 half the value of that property. They say, great. So how do we know and how can we confirm that you own that property? Praise God. Remember, we are looking for the evidence of things that are not visible. Things that, quote and unquote, cannot be held or touched, are not right now within the verification zone of the three dimensions. Time Space, matter cannot verify that thing. So that how do you show that banker that you actually own such a property in the United Kingdom? You have to show them um, an acceptable title document. Either there is a digital title that you can show them where they can go to some registry online or send someone, maybe they are... They are subsidiary in the UK to verify that title, praise God. You can bring a paper copy of it or a, a digital copy of it and then based on the numbers that they can go ahead and verify that that thing is for real. That title document is similar to your faith. So that with that title document guess what? Without even bringing the property over here, without them going to the property physically all they did was just verify the title, praise God. Your faith is the title. That's what the scripture calls. There's actually a translation that calls faith. That place I quoted in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It says faith is the title. It is the title of things that cannot be seen. It's the evidence of things that are, cannot be seen, praise God. So that, what do I mean? Now that God has told Abraham that I will make you the father of a great nation, I'll make, I'll make thee a great nation, I will bless thee, I'll make your name great, I'll do all that. What is the evidence that that thing is actually a done deal? The instruction. Until that instruction part is added, there is no faith, praise God. But I, said, but I was told that faith is me believing that that thing will happen. See, you can believe all you want. The devil believed, like we're told in, I believe, um, Titus. The devil believed and shrugged. You can believe so much. <laughs> but if there is no instruction as to what to do, that thing will not happen. Listen to me. 
I, I would say I'm going to give you a, 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 um, I'm going to make you a successful farmer. You have got a piece of land. You have got, you know, a, a lot of people. And I say, I'm going to make you a successful tomato farmer. Praise God. Until I give you seed, there will never be any tomato farm. You will just have a large piece of land. Praise God. The seed I now give to you is what assures and guarantees that in the next so and so period after the gestation period of the tomato seed has been fulfilled you will become the owner of a tomato farm praise god that seed is the instruction that god gives to you the part where god tells that or the disciples feed these people it's that crucial. That instruction is that crucial. The part where God actually goes ahead and tells all of them feed these people. You say, well, um, but he didn't tell me how to feed them, what to use to feed them. All that is not crucial. All that is not as important as that instruction. Because you see, God assumes that you know already that you are going to feed them with what you have, not what you don't have. So that you say, well, I have a million dollars. It's not important. I have one dollar. It's not important. If God says, God says nothing. God says, I'm going to make you a great person. You're going to be successful. You're going to be super rich. You're going to be all that. And because you have one million dollars, you say, God has told me I'm going to be successful. So you decide what business you want to go to. And then you start running the business. And then you run it and run it and run it and nothing happens. You say, well, that means God's word did not come to pass. No. Because God never told you what to do. He just told you what will happen. If you do, that thing he has not told you yet. So wait for him to tell you what to do. Because that is the evidence that that thing will happen. Praise God. That is the evidence. So we are seeing this morning, the faith of Abraham is the faith that has both the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Praise God. I'll say it again. The faith of Abraham is the faith that has both the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. All through the life of Abraham, you will see these elements there. Abraham, take your son, your only son. Genesis chapter 22. Take your son, your only son, and go sacrifice him. Praise God. God will give him that specific instruction, praise God. That specific, and earlier on, not in that conversation, earlier on, God had already told him that through that your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God had already told him that. And yet, the same God, you see what I'm telling you now. God had told him that through Isaac, all the families of the earth will be blessed. But God did not tell him anything to do at that time. And then later on, God now adds the word of instru- the instruction, the word of, uh, of wisdom as to what to do to make that harvest, that uh, uh, um, um, thing that's not seen yet, to make it seen, to make it materialize. God now tells him, take that your son, your only son, says, and go sacrifice him. And Bible says, and then early the next morning, without any conference, without any conversation with his wife, Abraham took the journey to Mount Moriah to go sacrifice that boy. While they were on the way, the boy himself said, Father, I understand that we're going to do a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. I see the wood. I see the knife. But I don't see the animal. I don't see the sacrifice itself. What's going on here? But the boy trusted his father. And Abraham trusted God. So that Abraham just carried out the instruction with what he had. Praise God. Abraham believed in his heart clearly that God must have a plan. And that's enough for me. All I have to do now, he gathered the wood that was within his control, gathered the knife, the fire, everything that was within his control, and then took the boy and then embarked on the journey. So that you must also look for these elements every time. If we are going to have the same kind of results Abraham had. Father, we thank you. This morning, I, I, I'm going to leave this here. What I decided to do 
Um, the B part of this message, what should come next week, God willing, is the part where we talk about the persistence and the perseverance of faith. Praise God. See, when, well, okay, I have some minutes, so let me do it now. Praise God. So that when you have received this word, that has the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, the next element is that element of persistence and perseverance. Uh, sorry. Of patience and perseverance. Praise God. That element of patience and perseverance. Bible says we should be imitators of those who through faith and patience obtained the promise. So that the faith of Abraham is also characterized by patience and perseverance. God has given you a word of, uh, uh, of wisdom. But the instruction has not come. Be patient. Continue to persevere. After the instruction has come and you have carried it out, be patient and continue to persevere. All through the steps of faith, you will see patience and you will see perseverance. Patience is that element of staying the same when confronted with contrary people. You can take down the definition and when confronted with contrary people, praise God. Patience has to do with people, praise God. You saying what God has said to you. Abraham continuing to say that I am a great nation. I am blessed. I have a great name. Abraham continuing to say that my name is Abraham. Even when every person that comes around him are opposed to that idea, they are confrontational, they are negative, they are completely opposed to his success, they are contrary people. But Abraham continues to say the same thing. Patience, many times we think, has to do with, you know, how you act. But it has to do primarily with the words you are speaking that influences how you act. If you are speaking contrary words, you will act in contrary ways. Praise God. So patience has to do with contrary people. Perseverance has to do with contrary circumstances. Praise God. When the circumstances are not lining up to that word of wisdom, when what you are seeing does not look like the prophecy you received, when the things you are seeing does not look like the promises that God gave you, praise God, your ability to keep saying what God said, praise God. You started, when you started the journey, you had a million dollars. Five days into the journey, you are down to five dollars, but you are still saying what God said. They said, I thought you told us that once you invest in this business, you are going to become a billionaire. Now you have invested and you have become a neuronier. Praise God. You've lost everything already. Are you still saying, are you still holding on to that thing? Are you still confident and you keep saying this, that I am the father of many nations. My name is great. I am popular, I'm blessed and you are still saying what God said so faith walks and eventually produces when we add the element of patience and perseverance be imitators of those who through faith and patience obtained the promise, praise God so that the faith of Abraham is the faith, I'll do the rundown and then I'll end it for today. Is that faith, number one, that waits on God's word. The God's word that has a picture of the reward, a picture of the end, a picture of the goal, of the end game, of the destination. And then as a clear Caught instruction as to what you must do. Praise God. And remember, it is not about a plan. The instruction of God is not a plan. 
The instruction of God is an instruction of to what to do. Praise God. There are those that tell you things like, before you start out, there must be a plan that will connect you from the beginning to the end. That is not fourth dimensional, uh, a fourth dimensional way of life. That is the three dimensions. That is the motivational speaker in you talking. Praise God. God's instruction is not a plan. It is an instruction, praise God. It is you do this, you do that. Go now to Zarafat. Go now to this place I will show you. You go and tell Aaron this. Go and tell King Ahab this. That is how faith operates. So faith would have that word that shows you the end. Remember, God will not tell you what will happen in the middle, what will happen in the third innings. He doesn't do that. He's going to tell you the end. That's all he will tell you. There will be giants to fight the... He won't tell you all of that. He will tell you the end. And then he will tell you the beginning. The instruction to start you. To do what you must do. He will tell you that. Praise God. And when he has given you that instruction, you now obey. But in obeying him, keep in mind, there will be a need for patience and for perseverance. Patience has to do when the contrary people come. You thought God said you are going to be the president. You thought everybody was going to be in love with you. Guess what? Even those that loved you before you made the announcement, they now turned out to hate you all of a sudden. Still keep saying what God said. All of a sudden, those banks who gave you unlimited credit before, you had, you had unused credit in the, in the tens of millions. All of a sudden, everybody starts to cut down your credit line. So you are saying, so how am I supposed to execute this when I have when the contrary situations come? Stay the same. Keep saying what you were saying. Because at the end of the day, this is the analogy I use as I round off. When you get into the automobile, into the car, and you turn the steering, you have decided I want to turn right, or you have decided I want to turn left. As you dis make your decision and then decide to go where you want to go, you turn the steering wheels. You don't get out of the car to go push the car one way or the other. You just turn that small steering wheel. In the book of James, we are, it's called, the, there's an analogy of the captain of the ship and the rudder, praise God. That rudder is our mouth. That's what James said. So that what you do is that you turn the steering wheel in the direction you have decided to go. Depending on, I believe most cars today are, are for, you know, four-wheel drive. Depending on the, you know, axle or whatever of that car, sometimes some of them react faster than the other. So that you don't say, well, this car is not turning fast enough. Then you get out and go push the car. You turn the rudder and then you wait. Praise God. The ocean liner, liner example is the best because some ocean liners are so big, say like the Titanic or this, this um, oil, you know, tankers, you know, that you have on the seas. They are so much, some of them are bigger than a whole block. They got all kinds of things on them. For them to make a U-turn, I don't know. I've never been on one before. I don't know how long it will take, but I dare say, even my imagination tells me it's going to take a long time. But after the captain has decided that he wants to turn, all he does is to turn the rudder, and then he waits. He waits. Patience, perseverance for that liner to line up with the desires in his heart. He knows that it is going to happen, but all he needs to do is to turn the rudder. In the same way, God has shown you what will happen to your ship. It is going to turn. God has told you what to do. You have done it, or you are doing it, praise God. And then add patience and perseverance. If it is taking time to happen, or it looks like things have gotten worse since you started, stay the same. And ultimately, just like Abraham, we would have the same experience. Abraham left Iran as God has, had instructed him. He got to Egypt 
and he met a contrary situation. He met contrary people. He met someone that even took his wife, praise God. He went to uh, um, um, another place, Abimelech was king there, and he took his, so that Abraham confronted contrary people, but he knows what God told him. The word of wisdom, the promise God made him, and the word, of, the instruction God had given him, and because he was walking in that instruction, Abraham was confident that God's word will come to pass. Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter fifty-five, it says, "Such is the word that goes forth out of my mouth; it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish the purpose for which I sent it." Praise God! This morning, I haven't heard the word. I want you to make up your mind. In practice, for example, you want you 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 you've been at this job for so long, and now you think you are getting on in years, and you want a better job, and you've been praying. As you pray, what are you doing? Are you just waiting for a job to show out of somewhere, or are you practicing the faith of Abraham? If you are practicing the faith of Abraham. As you are praying, what you are waiting for is that word. That word that will tell you the future. That will tell you what job or what God has in front of you. Maybe it's not even a job. Maybe you are going to start your own business. You're going to become a startup owner. Praise God or a founder. Maybe it's that there is a job in another country. Maybe there is that. But God will come. As you pray, God will come with that picture. Sometimes he will show you through the word that kind of picture, but you will see your own picture. That, I don't want to go into that, but I've said it several times. When God says to you, I will make you rich, that word coming to 10 people will come with 10 different pictures, praise God. So even if it comes through verbatim, through the Bible, through the word of the Bible, your picture will be unique to you. But when you have now received that picture, in that same thing, and as you keep that prayer going, you would also receive the instruction what to do. Sometimes we call that the rima, what to do. The what to do will come, praise God. And when that what to do comes, then go ahead and do it, praise God. And it's as simple as that. It will not tell you to do something that is out of your reach. He will tell you to do something that is within your power. He will tell you something that is within your resource bank. Praise God. Now go ahead and do it. That is the practice of this word that I've brought to you this morning. And as you carry out the instructions, add patience, add perseverance. Wait on God. Because the word of God will not go unfulfilled. It says, I am watching over my word. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. I am watching over my word to perform it. He is the one who has spoken and he will not lie. He is jealous over his word. He is jealous over his word. Praise God. And he will fulfill every word that he has made to you. When we live like this, then we become the descendants of Abraham indeed. Because he says, it is not according to your circumcision, according to your affiliation, according to your race or creed. It is according to you living by the steps of faith of Abraham. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we thank you. Jehovah, we thank you for this word that you have given us this morning. We ask, O oh Lord, for grace to practice this word, to become practitioners of faith indeed. That everything we do, in, in everything we do, everywhere we go, O oh Lord, that we will live by faith indeed. That we will live by faith indeed. That it shall be said of us that we live by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will not be moved, O oh Lord, by the realities of the three dimensions, but that we will be focused, yes, on the image, the projection, and the picture 
shall, that God has shown to us so that everything you say, we affirm, O oh Lord God, that it is possible. Yes, if you have said it, we know it is possible. We know it is done. We know it is ours already. And we thank you because not only shall we know, but we will know them in physical reality in Jesus' mighty name. Not only will we know them in our spirit and in our mind, but we will know them physically in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Mighty Father, we give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. And might I give a few minutes now, or a few seconds for everyone? Just pray to God right now. I don't know what your desires are, but based on the words you have heard this morning once again, I want you to put into practice this word of faith. This word of faith. As you pray this morning, God will instruct you. Eleboshan, Talibrados, Kazilia. God will show you the clear image that will be answer to your prayer. You said, God, give me money. He will show you that you will receive dollars. He will show you and then he will give you instruction of what to do. Praise God. Oh, Father, we thank you. You have said it that, God, I want this thing. He will show you what that thing will look like in your own case and then he will show you what you need to do based on what you have, not what you don't have. Mighty God, we thank you. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Pray. Bible says men ought always to pray and never to faint, never to give up. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Le kajanta la brodoska beri kade kabo raketa kalagabo zelede makretu robo zentare kabo zeliada. Father, thank you because you are here. Oh, Spirit of God, we thank you because you are here. Lord Jesus, we thank you because you have congregated with us this morning. And so, Lord, we thank you because every prayer that is going up to you now is coming into your ears and is receiving your attention and has received your attention answers this morning in Jesus mighty name father we thank you in Jesus name we have prayed father I just thank you for everyone I thank you for every prayer that has been made Lord I trust you with everything that is in me that you will pray Prove this word to your people this morning. I say every prayer is answered. I say every result that they have sought, they have received it now in Jesus' mighty name. I say, Father, every sickness is healed. Every disease is healed. I thank you, Father God, because financial troubles have been destroyed this morning. Thank you because needs have been met. Thank you, Father God, because desires have have been met. Thank you, mighty Father God, because everything that was an obstacle before that your people sought a removal of, they have been removed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Lord, I ask for your favor. For every one of us this morning and this week, I ask for, Lord, tangible favor. The kind of favor that moves kings. The kind of favor that changes legislation. The kind of favor that causes rules to be changed overnight. Lord, I ask right now, shower us with your favor. Shower us with your favor. The kind of favor that turns nothing into something. I say shower us with your favor. The kind of favor that causes things that are worth all of that to be given over with none of that. I say Lord shower us with your favor in Jesus mighty name. Father we thank you. I speak protection over your people today. I say, Lord, that your angels, in accordance with your promise, will indeed watch over and guard your people. That as we go out this week, we go in safety. As we come back, we come back safely. That all our moves, our growing, everything is under your careful eyes in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, mighty Father God. Thank you, King of Kings. 
cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Lord, I speak boldness unto your people. Let the spirit of boldness descend like never before. Lord, that as your instructions come, that as your word of wisdom comes, Lord, that as your logos descends on us, Lord, that we will not be afraid of what we see. Lord, that we will not be scared of the magnitude of what you have proposed to do in our lives. Lord, but we will receive it, Lord. That we will receive it, Lord. That we will embrace it boldly, mighty Father. And we will step out on the water. We will step out on the instruction in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, mighty Father God. Thank you, King of Kings. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. City with Foundations The Church, whose builder and architect is God.